I'm here with Lily. Hi, Lily. Hello. And we have a poem called Poem by Alice Notley. Mm -hmm. I'll read it and we'll talk about it. Poem. St. Mark's Place, caught at night in hot summer, lonely from the beginning of time until now. Tompkins Square Park would be midnight green, but only hot. I look through the screens from my third floor apartment as if I could see something, or as if the bricks and concrete were enough themselves to be seen and found beautiful. And who will know the desolation of St. Mark's Place with Alice Notley's name forgotten and this night never having been? Lily, what's happening at the end there? We might as well go right to it. I think it's, we, um, the beginning does a lot of scene setting um, that we found out is kind of like false scene setting because this night never actually existed and maybe even Alice Notley the person. Or um, if, if, <laughs> if Alice were not, had not existed, it would just mm -hmm. be what? It would just be, it would, um, I feel like it hinges on the verb in that first line, caught at night. Mm -hmm. um, it implies like someone's doing the catching mm -hmm. and Alice Notley is that person we mm -hmm. imagine because she's the narrator so mm -hmm. it's almost um, it's like uh, if she disappeared then the whole poem and the whole night would disappear mm -hmm. where is this located these scenes uh, in New York City on the Lower East Side Lower East and the East Village mm -hmm. right is that significant given where Alice Notley grew up as a poet or came of age as a poet with Definitely. a group of poets? Yeah, this is um, like this very much the site of the New York School movement writing um, about their... After the af first generation af of them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, people who are inspired to use like how the city is structured and what it looks like and how they move through it to write their poetry. Mm. Um, and you can see that she's across the street looking up. So this is also a poem in a long tradition of poems uh, where poets look out windows, mm -hmm. especially at night, right? Yeah. And this is something Keats did, always talked about his casement. Right. Uh, Coleridge did it. Uh, so what, is that significant? Yeah, we get a few words like lonely um, connects to that tradition maybe, this idea mm. of being lonely inside and looking out to find more fulfillment somewhere else um you know, like looking out your window maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then also the um fourth line i look through the screens as if i could see something um kind of calling out this idea that um if you could look out your window you can directly describe what you see outside of it she's kind of saying um, there's literally a screen. I can't see what's out there. Screen is literal, but it's also very uh, metaphorical and theoretical mm -hmm. because all seeing is screen. All, all poems that report scenes are seen through a screen. Yeah, and also um, as if bricks and concrete were enough to be seen and found beautiful. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, okay, maybe I can describe what I see, but for a poet writing in the 20th century, what we're seeing is not a romantic, beautiful landscape by right. traditional standards, right. I have to look for those elements in something different. In that respect, Lily, such a modern poem. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking of all of the 20th century, starting with, you know, poets like Marianne Moore and William Carlos Williams, who saw beauty in the city. Right. And this is very much in that mode, except with the twist at the end, mm -hmm. which is a twist on, I mean, Williams and, and H.D. and Marianne Moore would never there's too much modernist ego there for them to have said, well, but anyway, if I, when, I, mm -hmm. when my name is forgotten, this scene won't have been beautiful or right. something like that. And also um, cities lend themselves to thinking about legacy and the um, continuing trajectory of civilization maybe more than just your regular green, regular green landscape as opposed to midnight green hot landscape um, because it's a layered place. It's like a place where you can directly... Um, you know, trace the roots of other people who have been there before. Finally, Lily, we do know the desolation of St. Mark's Place, mm. don't we, through this poem. In other words, there's a wink, wink. You know, Alice Notley does exist, this poem does exist, and we have a sense of it because what she went ahead and described. Yeah, I think um, the desolation of St. Mark's Place could actually be the desolation of any place because this is actually, I think, a poem about waking up in the middle of the night 
feeling a sort of existential dread, looking out your window and then figuring out what to do with it. So new slash modern, but also so traditional mm -hmm. in the best sense of this is what poets do. Yeah. Right? And there's always a pun, which you implied at the very beginning of this conversation, of seeing and seeing. Mm -hmm. Right? This is a scene, scene, and there's no such thing in a poem of a scene that's not seen by someone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. This was great. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.